So now we're going to move to what I consider to be the sort of the heart and soul of what INCF is, and that's the volunteers who form these special interest groups and working groups that actually develop these consensus-based, we always hope, uh, standards and best practices. So our first, uh, I should state, jump back and say that we had some uh, special interest group meetings that took place Wednesday at the same time as the hackathon and also the infrastructure workshop. So we, uh, the next few speakers will tell us a little bit about their special interest group and also what they accomplished during their meeting this week. So our first speaker, yeah, yeah new number, Francois, yeah, is uh, Francois Mohamed C, and he's going to speak about his special interest group, group uh, Neuroshapes. Um, thank you. So my name is um, Mohamed Francois C. I worked for BBP at APFL in Geneva, Switzerland. So I'm going to um, talk about um, a newly created uh, NCF special interest group uh, called Neuroshapes and walk you through a little bit the goals of Neuroshapes and uh, yeah, what we had uh, started to do during the last, uh, during Wednesday, uh, our first uh, meeting. So what is uh, Neuroshape? Neuroshape is an initiative to promote the usage of semantic markups as a way to describe data sets. Um, so we want to um, uh, encourage people to uh, publish data set over the web so they use uh, semantic markups, um, for example, extending and reusing uh, schema.org once instead of creating uh, custom ones. So a lot of initiatives currently are doing that. I'm thinking of a bioschema, for example. So as much as possible, um, reuse schema.org markups. And when there is no um, schema.org one, uh, create one uh, for neuroscience uh, data type, for example. So this is one, one thing. Second thing is uh, promote the usage of the W3C Provo vocabulary uh, as a way of capturing provenance. Um, so one important thing we try to do in Neuroshape, or we hope to be able to do, is capturing provenance is, is not just a description task or annotation task. I mean, it's quite accepted that uh, I mean, a lot of people are already doing that. We hope to be able um, to reuse that description of the provenance as a way to provide ontological definition for data types. Um, we want to promote the usage of profiles and schemas as a way to enforce metadata uh, quality rather than having it on procedural codes. Uh, in the project where I work, BBP, uh, a lot of uh, developers, um, a lot of People there um, put a lot of um, check or a lot of constraint on, on procedural code rather than putting it on artifacts that are easily shareable and discoverable. And we want to really uh, promote uh, the usage of schema. And in another shape, we picked a W2C shackle. That's why it's shapes, because in W2C shackle, uh, we have schema called shapes. Um, so we pick it because it uh, goes beyond JSON schema and it has very good properties in form of, I mean, it's, it's very, very expressive and uh, you, uh, some people, they can express a lot of, lot of, lot of constraint. Uh, something we want to do as well, or we start to do at BBP, um, is really to try to find um, schemas for a lot of neuroscience specific entities like morphology, reconstructive, um, if it's recordings, uh, um, uh, single cell models or circuit, which are the neuroscience entity we, we worked with there, but really try to find uh, something that is called here MINDS, which is what are, um, can we come up with a profile or a schema that will enable neuroscientists to publish or to describe their data. Uh, using sort of normalized um, normalized schema. So this is an ongoing effort that we, we started it in, in Neuroshape as well. So what do we have currently uh, uh, in Neuroshape? I mean, if you visit the, the GitHub repository, uh, you'll find uh, schemas and profiles for various uh, neuroscience data types that we care about, uh, mainly reconstructed cells, which are um, generated from uh, the LNMC lab, which is uh, a lab at APFL that uh, perform reconstructed, um, that reconstruct cells from slice. Uh, you would have a whole cell patch clamp recordings as well, schema to, uh, to describe those data types. 
as well as some um, profiles for describing Brain Atlas releases. So here I'm just showing an example of uh, what type of description we came up with uh, in NeuroShape. For example, this is a prof description of reconstruct of uh, if his recordings here, as it is done uh, at the LNMC lab. So I'm not sure if it's clear enough. No. So basically, we have a bunch of uh, we have the workflow here described using W3C prof. Uh, so it's a activities that uses entities and generated other ones, and uh, we were able to map um, the agents that were involved, as well as the different protocols that were that were used. Here we have the same type of pattern for uh, morphology reconstruction, for example. And here we have the, um, the way we represent or the way we describe uh, at brain atlas releases within, within BBP, for example. So currently, um, these schemas, we, have, we don't have many of them for now. So these schemas um, are mainly used uh, at BBP because we created them, but as well um, at HBP, um, mainly the HBP brain simulation platform. So we had a hackathon with them uh, so that we were, uh, and we were able to produce um, some profiles for single cell model and for circuit, for example. And uh, CAMEX, the Crumble uh, Center for Neuroinformatics just started to look at uh, NeuroShape and how they can, they can adopt the, the approach. And as well, uh, we had this collaboration because these three organizations, um, they kind of share uh, the same uh, data integration platform uh, component, which is BlueBrain Nexus, as shown here. So it was um, very useful to, at the same time, we share um, the same data management component to share as well uh, some data models for some neuroscience uh, data set type. So we had a meeting, um, uh, the first one, uh, Wednesday, uh, we had eight participants, um, eight motivated participants, um, who really challenged the approach, I would say. <laughs> uh, because I had the, I would say, I said that uh, JSON LD uh, is very developer friendly, but apparently a lot of people don't think like that, but that's fine. I still think it's developer friendly. <laughs> So um, uh, during that meeting, we, I presented the NeuroShape goals, um, and we looked at uh, some possibilities of having Charcoal Schema for an IDM data models, which already have RDF representation as ontologies, et cetera. So it was really straightforward. I think Taylor here ha had written some, some cool schemas for, for an IDM for her use case at CAMEX, and we looked at that. Um, so we identified that we need a Python uh, Shackle uh, validator to get more people involved. As I think in the neuroscience community, a lot of people are working with, um, with Python. Currently, the W3C Shackle um, uh, validator we have are only written in Java and Scala. So this is something that we'll gonna, we will um, work on. And got useful discussions and, and feedback about the usage of semantic web in general uh, within uh, science and neuroscience specifically. So it was really interesting. Um, so how to contribute? Um, we have a GitHub page. So INCF slash neuroshapes, we had a GitHub for chat. Um, so we have the SIG page in INCF and we love hackathons. So that's how we got all the, how we work usually within BBP, with HBP and with other, other collaboration that we, that we have. So we call it bring your own data sessions. So really contact us and we'll be happy to organize one, right? So that's it. Any burning comments, questions, feedback? Training uh, piece to your SIG. Uh, what? Sorry. Do you have a training piece, like tutorials? Uh, you know, or is there any plan to develop that? Yes. Yes. Currently, um, it's not yet out, but uh, somebody is working hard uh, this week to put that out. The beginning of next week. So we'll have a tutorials, um, basically tutorials on how to how to create these schemas, Python tools as well that we're going to put out. Definitely, yeah. So if you're looking for a challenge, they're looking for more people. So contact yes. them if you want a challenge. We've got a new participant today, so. Yeah. Excellent. Wonderful. That's great. Yeah. <laughs>
So thank you. Thank you.